For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome custom guitars. Now, I'm turning my passion into a profession by seeking out old, beat-up guitars and giving them new life, all while trying to make a profit. I'll be searching everywhere for used gear that I can refret, rewire, repaint, whatever it takes to make it a real shredder. This is Trash to Thrash. The first time was for fun. The second? Well, the second was for fun too. But it's also for a customer. This is the Haxon. It's a guitar that I chopped the bottom horn off to make it easier to play really high up with my big hands. And it actually worked. I recently gave it a new paint job, new pickups, a new kill switch, and a new neck. A complete makeover. And I must say, I'm blown away by the way this guitar looks. I love it. I've never been a huge fan of flat black, but there's something about the alien blood on this thing that just makes it look insane. I recently showed it to somebody I'm building a guitar for right now, for inspiration, and he fell in love with it and said, I want a Haxon too. So it happened. We made another Haxon. But this one's going to be quite a bit different. After doing some modifications, a lot of modifications, it's ready for paint. The first color that's going on this guitar will be a nice bright orange. This guitar was about 22 years old, and it was pretty beat up. So I gave it a good sanding, sprayed it with some primer, and then sanded it again to get a real level. Old guitars are a lot like old cars. As long as they haven't been abused too badly, you should be able to restore them and give them new life. After about five solid coats of paint, this thing is starting to look pretty good. All right, we're here in the paint booth. We got the Haxon 2 right here, ready for some more paint. I already laid down the base coats here. The inside color here is a red, and the outside's an orange. It's got a slight burst. It's the same colors I used on my Tiger Roads. The customer said these are his favorite colors, so that's what we're doing on this thing. Now I'm adding the red over the center section to give it the burst effect. Most factory paint jobs use a spray gun with an air compressor hooked up to it, and can use transparent paints that layer over each other to give it a natural burst. But with spray paint, they come out in a solid color, so you can't really blend it the same way, and you have to use a feathering technique like here and go back and forth with both colors. Here's a little bit more orange on there. Now they look really well blended together, but I still have one huge surprise coming later. I also told them my vision for this guitar was to paint the pickups with it to make a match. So instead of the 5766 black chrome set that was going to go in Project Pink, Haxon 2 is going to get the EMG 8185 set I have here. These look like they're going to hold paint a lot easier and they're going to look just as good. Why use a premium finished pickup when you're going to paint over it? After that you're going to see the surprise with this guitar. There's a finish that's going on the end of this that is going to knock your socks off. I've told a couple people about it and it's blown everybody's mind. So the next step is going to be to sand the pickups and the pickup ring and get them prepped for paint, then we're going to throw down some red paint on them today. These are actually the pickups that came out of my black MH-1000 that I bought earlier. One of the things I love about guitars is when you take parts off one of them, they always go back on something else. I painted the pickups and the rings red because they sit right in the center of the guitar within the red area where the burst is. They turned out awesome. Now it's onto the headstock, which also will be painted to match the body. Orange and red burst. I'll also be replacing the Jackson logo with the black Jackson Custom Shop logo. This guitar is going to have black tuners on the headstock too, so all the black is going to really pop there. All right, now you can see I'm starting to layer this thing with paint. The first coats I did on it were orange because I wanted the back and the sides of it to match the main color of the body, but I still want to have the red burst in the center of it. All right, so what am I doing here? I'm spraying some spray paint into a cup to splatter it on. Just like my Alien Blood Haxon, this one's getting some splatter too, but it's getting black. And here we have the reveal. Orange to red center burst painted pickups and rings with black splatter over a Haxonified Jackson. I have never seen anything like this. Meanwhile, while this is going on, 
The blue Flame Maple Jackson is all finished up and ready for sale. This thing turned out amazing. It looks awesome, it plays great, and it sounds phenomenal. The EMG 5766 pickup sounds so good, and the Iron Age kill switch is a great visual touch, as well as a real fun accessory to play with too. It's loaded with a gold Floyd Rose original and Goto tuners. I mean, this thing is top of the line and it's ready to go. I know it's gonna make somebody really happy. I just recently listed and sold this Sunburst Flame Maple Jackson. This is a guitar that I've had for a long time with an original Floyd Rose, Seymour Duncan pickups, special switching, and a scalloped neck. I also listed and sold this LTD KH202 with EMG 81 and 60 pickups. It also has Kirk Hammett's signature vintage look with the Caution Hot and Kirk's guitar stickers. I recently also sold this Ibanez RG120. I had bought this guitar a few years back for $80 on Craigslist. I upgraded the bridge pickup to a DiMarzio Crunch Lab and added an Iron Age LED kill switch. I also just recently sold this Tom DeLong Signature Fender Stratocaster. The guitars are really starting to fly off the shelf over here. I told you guys I've got somewhere near 50 guitars and I'm trying to get down to a more manageable collection, somewhere around 20, so I've still got quite a ways to go, but I'm starting to make a dent at it. Now let's get back to the Blood Shadow Jackson. Part of me wasn't sure if I went overboard with the splatter on this one. There's a lot that goes into it and you don't really have a lot of control over it. There's a lot of variables that go into it the type of container you put your paint in, the temperature of the paint, the actual paint itself are all factors in determining what the splatter is going to look like. Well, after mounting the components, which are all black, I can say that I love it. The black Floyd Rose bridge offsets the splatter perfectly. The kill switch and the knobs help balance it all out too. There's even a resemblance of a famous mouse there, which was completely unintentional. To me, making a beautiful custom art piece comes down to details like this. A custom painted, matched battery. It'll be on the inside of the guitar, but since I'm making clear covers for the cavities, it will be on display on the back of the guitar. And some people will say, well what happens when the battery dies? Well, I can always make a few more for the customer, and usually I do, I'll send a couple extra with them. I leave my mark on each custom guitar I build. The Guitar Guts GG Skull logo. One thing that makes this guitar awesome is the matched headstock, but it still needs a few finishing touches. A Jackson logo. You can buy replacement logos on water slide material, or if you have the right equipment and computer skills, you can make your own. To seal it, it needs a clear coat over it. In this case, a satin clear, since the body was sprayed with a satin finish. After the satin clear, it's time to put the final touch on it. Black splatter so it really matches the body. Like I said earlier, the splatter can be pretty random. The force you use to fling the paint and the distance you are from the target affect how it'll look. And you need to consider the direction you're throwing it so it matches the body. If you're wondering why I did the splatter after the clear, it's because the clear is satin, but I want the splatter to be gloss, so the splatter needs to be on top of the satin clear. And the number one thing you don't want is to go overboard. You could always add more, but you can't remove it once it's there. It looks awesome. Now it's time to start reassembling it, installing the tuners, stringing it up, and setting up the Floyd Rose. This is an intimidating task for many, setting up a Floyd Rose. The buyer wants heavy gauge strings so he can play the guitar in a lower tuning. The Floyd is pulled up now. So to fix that, we turn to the springs in the back. If the strings are thicker, they pull harder, so we need to match them by making our springs pull harder and pull the Floyd back down. It's ready now. This thing turned out awesome. Even the back is radical. I painted the back of the headstock to match. A close-up of the cavity with the clear covers reveals the battery and LEDs. The pickups and the preamp booster in this guitar are powered by a 9-volt battery. Not all electric guitars have a battery, but this guitar has active pickups, which need a battery. 
To save battery life, I installed this switch to turn them on and off. I also wired it to disconnect the battery completely when the guitar is unplugged. The battery actually will last a really long time because of this, somewhere around a thousand hours or so. This thing is a beast. Powered by EMG pickups, it's gonna sound awesome. Now it's time to plug it in and test it out. Okay, this thing is just too awesome. Sometimes it's really hard to let these things go, but also it's really nice to send them off to people and watch them enjoy them too. So I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Come back next week for another action-packed episode. Next week's episode is all about Eddie Van Halen. It's a tribute to the greatest of all time. So tune back in next Thursday and make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share this episode with your friends. And hit that notification bell so you're notified every time a brand new episode drops. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week.